Everyone knows that thermal paste is an important part of your PC. It helps connect the CPU to the CPU heatsink to transfer heat from the CPU onto the heatsink. And the same with the GPU itself. The GPU core gets connected to the GPU heatsink via the thermal paste that helps transfer the heat because otherwise if you don't have thermal paste then the contact would be terrible because you know two metal surfaces or you know in the case of the GPU the silicon and the metal surface on the cooler it's not perfectly smooth so it wouldn't have 100% contact that's why you would need some thermal paste to cover the gaps and help bridge the heat from the GPU or CPU core onto the cooler and everyone knows that aftermarket paste is better and everyone knows that aftermarket paste is performing good compared to stock paste and old paste but I want to know if that's actually true so I have this H100i that I just got from RMA because it was broken so obviously I RMA did and I got one in the mail as a replacement and that still had the stock thermal paste so I figured I would just you know take this chance to test out the stock thermal paste that Corsair includes on the H100i PSD Noctua NTH1 aftermarket thermal paste. So we'll see which one performs better because I'm genuinely curious about this. I've never really seen any, you know, real confirmation of which one actually performs better. And I've seen some people say that the stock one actually performs just as good. And some people swear by that the aftermarket one performs much better and it isn't even some cheap thermal paste that you can just find in a dollar store or something this is a genuine high-end aftermarket paste by Noctua which is a reputable cooling brand from Austria so I guess we'll see which one performs better the stock paste or the, or the Noctua paste so this is the test bench that I'm gonna be using it's my uh, typical test bench for testing graphics cards and stuff it's a 4790k with an H100i to cool it and those are basically the only two important things that you have to know about this test bench regarding this test and obviously the H100i has those two Corsair SP120L stock fans that spins really high and they're also actually quite high performing if you see my fan review over here if you want to check those out and yeah so it's gonna be a 4790k that's been deleted and used uh, with cool laboratory liquid metal under it the liquid ultra uh, so this was before I changed it out to the uh, liquid metal from Conductonaut. So yeah, it's gonna be, and you know, in that video about switching the thermal paste, you can also see it up there. Uh, that video also shows that those two perform basically similar. So it's not a big deal. And yeah, this 4790K is also overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz at 1.39 volts. So it's gonna kick out quite a bit of heat, even if even though it's just a quad core. But I think it's really going to show you guys really what's the difference between thermal paste because, you know, being deleted, it doesn't have a bottleneck of the integrated uh, TIM inside the CPU itself. It's been replaced with a high performance liquid metal, so it's not going to be at the bottleneck. So the bottleneck is going to be the thermal paste, really. So, yeah, let's go to the testing. So at first, I, you know, tested the stock paste. So I just put it on the CPU cooler straight from the factory with the stock paste and just twist it on you know, the screws in typical cross thread so that it has proper contact. So for stress testing the CPU, I use the X264 stress test that you can find at overclock.net on the Haswell overclock guide, I think. Yeah, I use that because it's a you know real life, you know real world scenario where you encode video or something like that. And it does kick out quite a bit of heat as well. And you know, in this test, you can see that after a lot of time and also after the water temperature has stabilized at around 33 degrees Celsius or you know around 33 degrees Celsius for the H100i uh, the CPU temperature maximum uh, temperature has peaked at 72 degrees Celsius so 72 degrees Celsius for the stock pace and I mean that's it's quite a good result you know I wasn't I was expecting a bit worse because it's a stock pace but looks like it's done pretty well you know for a 4.8 gigahertz 4790k at 1.39 volts which is you know extremely high then again it is deleted that's why the temperatures are as low as you can see right now so i took that off you know the cpu cooler and you can see that the spread on the stock paste is actually quite good because the stock paste has been applied in like a thin film around the cpu area the cpu contact area so obviously it does cover the whole cpu pretty well so i cleaned that off I stuck on the Noxio NTH1 and put the cooler back on. And I fired up the stress test and this time since the water has been a bit warm already, 
so I didn't it didn't take quite as long to heat up the water so I just waited till the temperatures are again around 33 degrees Celsius so that means it has stabilized because it really doesn't go about that in the previous test with the uh, stock pace I tested but the surprising thing is that you actually see that the maximum temperature is 74 degrees Celsius for the CPU and I did keep track of the room temperature it hasn't changed a lot at all I mean in fact it hasn't changed at all so you know now I'm seeing that and like wait what's going on the aftermarket pace is actually underperforming the stock pace it's two degrees worse so I took that off I cleaned it up and I put the brand new like NTH1 up application on and I tried it again and I get the same result 74 degrees Celsius for the oh, sure. NTH1 and yeah that's two degrees worse than the stock Corsair pace so I guess that's that myth debunked you know right now if you're thinking that the aftermarket pace are always better and you should always uh, reapply your own pace on your CPU coolers the stock pace is definitely just as good or better like in this case than aftermarket pace like the Noctua NTH1 so yeah you don't really have to spend more on pace if you're building a new PC just use a stock pace at least for Corsair stuff uh, I haven't tested other coolers but for Corsair stuff like eight, their hydro coolers they're definitely using really high performance thermal pace on it so you know no need to change it save a buck or two and spend it on like candies or something but yeah that's it uh, that's the result of this video i thought it was quite interesting that's why i that's why i made this video uh and yeah thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please leave a like and please click subscribe to see more of my future videos and maybe leave a comment if you're surprised of the result because I certainly am. I was expecting the NTH1 to outperform it because, you know, it's Noctua. It's a high performance brand and it's a, it's not a very cheap pace either. But yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.